The previous lecture covered interaction energy and thermal energy and how those two forces determine the state of a material. Now it's time to give some names to specific types of interaction forces. We'll start with dispersion forces. Intermolecular forces are the static cling that attracts one object to another. It's charge-based. Surely everyone has taken a balloon, rubbed it on their hair, and noticed that they can get the balloon to cling briefly to a wall. That's what intermolecular forces are like. They're not intramolecular forces, like covalent bonds. These are very strong, and the energy required to break these bonds is on the order of 400 kilojoules per mole, depending on the bond type. The static cling between molecules, the intermolecular forces, are weak, and breaking those temporary attractions can be anywhere from 0 to 40 kilojoules per mole. Remember that the thermal energy available at room temperature is an average of 2.5 kilojoules per mole, so many of these forces can be broken simply at room temperature. So what is the nature of the intermolecular force holding one molecule to another molecule? We go back to Coulomb's law and the force of attraction between oppositely charged entities. Molecules have regions of partial positive charge and partial negative charge from asymmetric distribution of valence electrons. So molecules have an overall dipole to them. This dipole comes in several categories. Temporary, in which case we call them dispersion forces, or permanent, in which case we call them dipole forces or hydrogen bonding. We'll start with dispersion forces. Those of you with previous chemistry experience may have heard them called London forces or van der Waals forces. Dispersion forces are the strongest force of attraction available for nonpolar molecules. So a perfect example is nitrogen. Even though nitrogen is nonpolar and the formal charges on each nitrogen are zero, the electrons travel about in their orbital patterns. So at any particular time, it may be that there is more electron density on the right side of the molecule versus the left side of the molecule. This creates a partial negative on the right side and a partial positive on the left side. If one molecule has a dipole, it can induce dipoles in molecules that are within the vicinity. So the next molecule over, the electrons, notice there's a lot of electrons here, and say, ooh, like charges repel. I should go over to the right side. So we've now induced a dipole into the molecule on the right side, and the same thing happens to the molecule on the left side. The electrons are roaming about and say, hey, it's very interesting over here. There's a positive charge. Let's go take a look. So we generate these static cling temporary attractions known as dispersion forces. Dispersion forces are generally the weakest intermolecular force, but they are important in molecules with large electron clouds. Dispersion forces typically increase with a molecular size or mass. Let me give you an example. Let's consider these four nonpolar molecules. The fluorine molecule, chlorine, bromine, and iodine molecule. Fluorine and chlorine at room temperature are gases. That means they have weak intermolecular attractions. Bromine at room temperature is a liquid. That means it has a stronger intermolecular attraction. And iodine at room temperature is a solid, so it has the greatest intermolecular attraction. So you notice as the mass increases, the intermolecular forces increase between like molecules such that interaction energy changes the state of the material from gas to liquid to solid. 
The more mass a molecule has, typically the more dispersion forces are available.